Hello guys, and welcome back to the MedBros channel. In today's video, we're gonna be going over some racist patient encounters that I've had. I did a previous video where I mentioned real quickly that I had racist patient encounters, especially at the VA hospital here. And I got a couple comments. How, what kind of experiences do you have? How do you deal with them? How do you feel after? And I'm gonna be going through that in this video because I've unfortunately had my fair share of racist patient encounters. I'm just gonna tell you that I've personally experienced and have seen others experience racist patient encounters with people of all different backgrounds. So let's get right into it. Let's go into the most common encounter that happens with patients and that is, hello, can I see a, uh, no, 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 I didn't wanna see him. Can I see a white male doctor, please? I don't know why I did a British accent, a terribly broken British accent, but, <laughs> But this typically is the most common racist experience that we do get. Regardless, I've seen it many times happen to myself and others where you walk in and or you overhear or the nurse comes to you and says, hey, look, the patient is uncomfortable. You know, they've seen you, they've seen even your last name alone sometimes and they request a different doctor. This is one of those experiences that I've recently had over at the VA and that's you walk in, you introduce yourself to the patient and they start asking, hey, can I get a white male doctor to see me? So when this happens, I'm typically initially just disappointed that's kind of the main thing that you feel it's like you went through all this practice you're training you're trying to learn you're trying to do the best for this patient that is sick and their priority is that they see a white male doctor so it is frustrating it is disappointing but to deal with this problem you want to figure out why is the patient asking this question did they have a bad experience with a doctor of this background before did they have a bad experience growing up is there something that you might be able to talk them out of or kind of break down their prejudice just through discussion itself because one thing you have to realize is medicine is very different than many other occupations obviously if you go into a car mechanics shop and you you tell them, hey, I don't want you working on that. I want a white guy working on my car. They, <laughs> they're they seriously gonna blast you, gonna throw a wrench at you and say, yo, fix your car yourself, get out of here, I'm not taking care of you. You can't really do that in medicine. Patient comes first. You, regardless of the patient's state and how they're, whatever they're seeing, whatever they're dealing with, doctors have to put up with a lot right there off the bat and keep the patient first in mind. Now, if that doesn't work, that's where things get very tricky in that different establishments are gonna handle it differently. Some places are gonna have, an, or even some doctors themselves are gonna have a zero tolerance policy. You're gonna deal with me or you're gonna go get care somewhere else. That's how some places deal with it. Other places might have other systems in place where they might move the patient's care to a doctor who's a little more, that they're a little more comfortable with. Now, the problem with that is, of course, patients can transfer their care all the time. If, if they don't like your doctor for a particular reason, you can always change your doctor to somebody else. The problem is the reason behind it. If the reason behind it is bigoted and really your main issue is the race issue, that's blatant racism. And while moving the patient might be the best option to a provider who is satisfying their needs of race and gender or whatever else they're stuck on, you still have to get to the underlying issue. And that's where hospitals and other entities have to have programs and an organization in place so that we can report these incidents and there are consequences for blatantly racist behavior. You can't just let racist behavior just kind of go unchecked. Now, frankly, this is actually one of the more easier situations to deal with is when a patient kind of just wants to switch their provider for whatever reasons, whether it be race or gender. The more difficult situations are when patients are blatantly racist straight to your face. Now, this is definitely more rare. It takes some serious, serious gung-ho, stick to your guns, racist to go ahead and execute blatant racism straight to a doctor's face but it has happened. During my first year of residency here, I was assigned one of the patients on one of my rotations. Went to go see him, things were going fine. I was getting history, he let me do the physical, there was no issue. Other than being kind of distant and not very responsive to me, it seemed okay, it seemed like things were going all right. Even though he wasn't really responding, I was just like, whatever, maybe that's just how he is. Finished my stuff, kind of informed him what the plan was and how we were gonna come and round as a team in a bit. So a few hours later on rounds, we get around to him and this guy goes off. He goes bananas, like straight up at the top of rounds, he points to me, he says, I don't want this guy in the room. This Arab isn't doing anything for me at all. Uh, I'm in pain. He's not giving me any pain medications. My, you know, people are just ignoring me. I want that Arab out of here. Uh, you guys can all stay. And, and, and when asked about medical students and other residents, 
as long as they didn't look like me, they could have stayed. So that wasn't an issue at all. And really I had minimal interaction with him, which was what the shocking part was. This was like my second day on the rotation. I was just getting to know the patients, just kind of figuring out what was going on. All the appropriate care in the plan was being done for him. Uh, you know, pain medications were on board. I don't know if he just didn't get as many as he wanted to. I don't know what made him lash out, but that that's just exploded on me. And these situations are far more frustrating because now you're not only just being questioned on your skills as a doctor, you're blatantly being disrespected to your face by individuals. So to deal with these kind of situations, you really just have to realize that humans are flawed. Some humans are flawed in different ways. And unfortunately, some humans are flawed in the fact that they believe in racist ideals. I don't know if it was this person's upbringing, maybe his parents kind of instilled some of these things into him, maybe it's some experiences he had. Maybe Basically what it comes down to is as a doctor, you have to have the understanding that this comes with the territory. Unfortunately, medicine is just so many more things than you initially think it is. You think you're gonna walk up in here, you're gonna prescribe some medications, you're gonna figure out what's going on, you're gonna make this amazing diagnosis and heal people. Then you come to the, the field of medicine and you realize there's so much politics, there's so much logistics, there's so much other things that, that are when you're dealing with people's health that come into play, whether it be in this situation, in this video, racism. But in the end of the day, you're a doctor, you're taking care of this patient and it's your job and your duty to make sure this patient's health is optimized to the best of their abilities as long as they are participating with you regardless of what crap they might say. And in the end of the day, just realize, hey, this guy in front of you just might be a dick. One of the biggest pieces of advice I can give, especially to the interns and even medical students starting right now, is you cannot take anything personally that happens at the workplace or at your medical school. Whether it be patients, simulated patients even. I remember I was triggered one time. I was at a sim lab and this guy came in and kept on talking garbage. Like it wasn't racist stuff that this particular individual was saying. And this was a simulated patient experience, but he was going off on me saying all sorts of personal stuff. I was like, what is going on? Regardless of what it is, you really just cannot take anything personally, whether it's an intending, anybody that you experience a kind of bad interaction with. Understand everyone is just in their own pot of shit and they're just wasting away in it and they're smelling it every day, every day of their life on the job, they're dealing with some kind of crap. And you just, unfortunately, when you get out and you come home, you just gotta take a shower, get all that crap off of you and just let it wash off. Like I have stories and stories of myself and even other individuals where I, like on our ob guide rotation, I think I mentioned it in my ob guide vlog, I literally saw a medical student pushed by their attending. So you really can't bring any of that garbage home with you. I mean, luckily for me, I have extremely thick skin and I've been dealing with racist patient, not patient encounters, but racist encounters in general ever since I was a kid. Luckily, I hit like, I think I was like already 5'11 in like sixth grade or something like that. So I, it wasn't very much targeted toward me, but I would also get involved a lot of the times when it was friends and family and things like that, getting involved in these kind of racist scenarios. So I've heard it all, but I've definitely seen other colleagues really be affected by it. I remember I was at a clinic once and, and the patient called in and said, I guess they recognized the last name and they found out it was a woman doctor and they called in to change the doctor like on the last minute at the at the day of the clinic and uh, when she heard that she was pretty sad like she was pretty sad I'm sure it ruined her day uh, nobody wants to hear that have you know you work that hard you get all the way to the point where you're practicing and taking care of patients and someone kind of switches out on you just because of your gender or race or whatever of course, my solution to this is not just as simple as, hey, grow thick skin, but it is definitely one of the most important tools to have going forward in a career in medicine that whether it be racism or anything, thick skin is definitely essential because you're gonna come across all sorts of assholes. What else can be done is that these policies can be put into place and systems and protocols can be put into place so that we can report these instances and there should be consequences for blatantly racist patients. I don't care if you're a patient, I don't care if you're coming in with that garbage, there should be consequences if a patient is coming in and blatantly being racist and causing unnecessary issues for, for providers because why is this some kind of safe haven for patients to be racist just because they're patients? I understand the doctors are held to such a high standard. I know there's a lot of, you know, I'm going to do a video on kind of the physical violence that doctors really do face, especially in other countries. Um, less so in the United States, but even here, it definitely happens, especially towards nurses as well. 
But we really shouldn't have to be putting up with garbage like this. It shouldn't be some kind of safe haven just because you're a patient. You get everything catered towards you. And, you know, we're trying to our best to take care of you. And, and you're going off about kind of this racist nonsense. So some programs already have some of these things in place. I encourage you if you're at a program and you experience something like this to report this to any instances to whoever in your leadership positions are so that they can start working on figuring out what is the best way to tackle it and, and putting policies in place so that these kind of things can be teased out so we don't get situations where patients can be racist and then also the same kind of policies and reporting should be done if providers can be racist because as you guys all know that definitely happens there's a video on this channel that is blowing up i don't know why it's blowing up like six two two years later or a year later i don't know how long it was but all of a sudden it's blowing up so if you guys haven't checked it i'll put it in the description down below make sure you check out the video it's about a crazy crazy doctor or pa down in uh, houston texas and he was saying some crazy wild racist stuff so that's gonna be it for this one guys thank you so much for watching i hope you listened in on me ranting about racism and got something out of it so if you guys did enjoy that video please be sure to subscribe down below it helps a lot uh, sometimes we don't post and i come back and i do see that you guys are subscribing we're at like eighty four thousand subscribers that's absolutely insane i thank you guys so much for coming by hitting the like button engaging down below with the comments and hitting subscribe and sharing and doing all that awesome stuff i really appreciate it we see you guys out there and with that guys we'll see you in the next one